All right, this is lesson 9.5, the sine and cosine ratio. Now, I'm not going to do most of the exploration as it's pretty much the same idea as yesterday's. I mean, not yesterday's, um, lesson 9.4. Okay, so in this uh, lesson, we have the sine and the cosine ratio. Uh, in lesson 9.4, we talked about uh, when you have a reference angle, you have an opposite side, you have an adjacent side, and then you have a hypotenuse. So we ignore the hypotenuse in the previous lesson, but in this lesson, everything is going to be about the hypotenuse. Okay, so we're going to learn about two new ratios. The first ratio is called the sine ratio which is the ratio of the leg opposite of the angle divided by the hypotenuse. So it's very important that you learn how to identify where is the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is always across the right angle, always, okay? Now the cosine of an angle is the ratio of the leg adjacent to the angle divided by the length of the hypotenuse. Now, in lesson 9.4, we learned about the tangent ratio. So the tangent of an angle was the ratio of the leg opposite divided by the adjacent. So the idea is pretty much the same. You're just using a different side. Now, there is an acronym that's going to help us um, remember this. Okay, so I know it's a little silly, but it actually kind of helps. The acronym is SAKATOA. Okay, so how are you going to use that to remember it? Well, sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. Now, before we start with some of the examples, there's something I want to show you guys. If I were to have a right triangle, okay, not there. That is not the right angle, folks. This is the right angle. Okay, so I'm going to call this, um, let's see, C, A, and B. So I'm going to call this little a, little b, and little c. So let's look at what happens when I do the sine and the cosine of the two different angles. So let's start here with the sine of angle A. And let's look at the cosine of angle A and compare that to the sine of angle B and the cosine of angle B. So for the sine of A, here's angle A, the opposite is little a and the hypotenuse is C. For the cosine of A, the adjacent is B and the hypotenuse is C. So that's B over C. Now, if I switch the reference angle, in this case B, the sine of B is the opposite over the adjacent, I mean, um, over the hypotenuse. And for the cosine of B, it's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Okay, so cosine of B is adjacent over hypotenuse. And I want you guys to see one thing. Do you see how these two are the same? Do you see how these two are the same? Well, it's no coincidence, okay? So here, what you have is technically the sine of A, the sine of A is equal to the cosine of B, but what exactly is the relationship between A and B? Well, you gotta think about this. The measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B is equal to 90 degrees. So you can actually um, write any angle in terms of its cosine. For example, the sine of 10 is equal to, well, let's look at if angle A is 10 and add that to the measure of angle B to get 90, to solve for this, all you have to do is just subtract that 10 from that 90. So this would be cosine of 80. And it works backwards too. If you have the cosine of, I don't know, 20, you can write it as the sine of the complement of 20. So 90 minus 20, that is 70. So we're going to be actually looking at an example like that in problem number 
too. So let me tell you guys now exactly where are these examples going to go. So right now um, I was on page 262. Okay, turn the page over to 263. We're not going to really worry about that table. Okay, we're going to do problem number one right there. Problem number two right there. Problem number three right there on 263. Turn the page. Problem number four right there. And at the bottom, problem number five. Okay, so once again, we just learned about the sine and the cosine ratio. And we also learned, oh, and by the way, number six goes on the next page on 265, how to write uh, the sine of an angle in terms of its cosine. Okay, so that's an actual very easy thing to do. Okay, so let's go back to example number one. And we're going to start with the examples. Okay, example number one starts on page 263. All right, so let's begin. Okay, here's example number one. It says, find the sine of S, the sine of R, the cosine of S, and the cosine of R. So we have four things to find out. The sine of S, the sine of R, the cosine of S, and the cosine of R. So all they want is the fraction and the decimal rounded to the nearest four decimal places. If anything needs to be reduced, you must reduce. Otherwise, if you put it into the computer on big ideas for the online homework, it's not gonna work. All right, sine of S. So here says, S. Remember, sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So regardless of what you do, this is always the hypotenuse. Okay, so opposite, 63, hypotenuse, 65. We'll go back and put all the decimals in just a second. Now, let's look for the sine of R. The sine of R is the opposite over the hypotenuse. That's 16 over 65. Now, let's go back to the cosine of S. Here says, S. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. If this is the opposite, then this is the adjacent. So that's going to be the adjacent over the same hypotenuse. Here's R. This is the opposite, but cosine wants the adjacent. So it's adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to plug these into the plot. You know, we're going to see if anything reduces. Now, I really don't think anything here reduces, so we're just going to go ahead and, you know, plug them into the calculator. So 63 divided by 65, uh, they want four decimal places, that's 0 0.9692, and all these, they're, they're just from the calculator, guys. Now, this is the same as this one, so no point in typing it in again. Then you follow the sine of R. Okay, by doing 16 over 65, and that's going to give you 0 0.246. Now, here's the thing. That 5 is going to bump that 1 into a 2, and that should be the same thing for this one. So if on Big Ideas they want the actual answer, these are what you're going to put in. If they want the actual decimal to the nearest four decimal places, this is what you're going to be putting in. Okay, so that is what you have for number one. So if you need to pause the video, pause it so you guys can um, take some time and take some notes and write them down if you want to. Okay, so that's example number one. All right, let's look at example number two now. Okay, for example number two, they want us to write the sine of 56 in terms of cosine. So we learned that you can write the sine of any angle in terms of cosine 
if you simply subtract that angle from 90 degrees. So that's exactly what we're going to do. The sine of 56 is equal to the cosine of 90 minus 56, which is 34. Okay, so the sine of 56 is equal to the cosine of 34, and that is what you're going to type in. Pretty cool, huh? Very easy to. All right, let's jump to problem number three. Okay, let me zoom in because this one came out a little small. Okay, so this is example three. What they want me to do is they want me to find out the values of x and y. Now the question is, well, I don't know what to use. Do I use sine? Do I use cosine? Well, it all depends on what you are looking for. So if you choose to solve for x first, okay, what is the relationship between this angle and this side? Well, hello, it's the opposite. Okay, so this is the opposite, and I know my hypotenuse. The only ratio that I can use here that applies the opposite and the hypotenuse is the sine ratio. So let's start with that. Okay, the sine of 26 degrees is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. The opposite in this case is x, and the hypotenuse is 14. So the sine of 26 is x over 14. Now my goal is to solve for x. So like I said, treat it like a proportion. Cross multiply, you get one times x, which is x, 14 times the sine of 26. Do not multiply this 14 times the 26. 14 times the sine of 26. Now, you can type it in into the calculator just like that, or you can find out what the sine of 26 is. And according to the calculator, the sine of 26, if I click sine, oops, it's that much. So that should be 0.4484 in your four decimal places. So then you multiply that by 14, and it says to the nearest tenth, where are your x's? Oh, wait, hold on. Read the instructions. To the nearest 10. So I don't need to do all that. Okay, so if I do that to the nearest 10, then that's going to be 14. All right, so x is 6.14. Now, I could do Pythagorean theorem and find out what y is, but I'm not going to because the whole purpose of this lesson is for you to practice sine and cosine. So I'm going to use trigonometric ratios to find this one. Now, what's the relationship between this angle and this side? Well, it's not the opposite and must be the adjacent. So the only trig ratio that uses the adjacent and the hypotenuse is the cosine ratio. So the cosine of 26 is equal to the adjacent y over the hypotenuse 14. And you solve it exactly the same way. Put it over 1, cross multiply. And you get y equals 14 times the cosine of 26. When you plug that into the calculator, four time ti uh, 14 times the cosine of 26, I get the following. Now I'm just putting it into the calculator. Uh, to the nearest hundred, to the nearest tenth. Wait, Mr. Asuna, that's not to the nearest tenth. Yikes. It's been a long quarantine, guys. 6.14 to the nearest tenth is just 6.1. Yeah. All right, so 12.6. So we have solved for both x and y. And I relearned how to round to the nearest tenth. Hey, it happens to the best of us. Okay. And I haven't done math in a while. <laughs> okay, so that is how you solve for both x and y. So remember, ask yourself a question. What is the site that I'm looking for, and what is the relationship between the angle that I have and that specific site? If it's an opposite, then you're going to use sine. If it's an adjacent, then you're going to use cosine. All right, next problem is problem number four. 
it says find the sine and the cosine of 45. Now, this is a special angle. If you remember in the previous lesson, I talked to you guys about the special angles, which is 0, 30, 45, 60, 90, and any multiple of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a special right triangle for this one. Now, back from lesson 9.2, we learned that a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle, um, it's an isosceles triangle where the legs are the same. And the hypotenuse is the length of the leg times radical 2. Okay, so they want me to find what the cosine of 45 is and what the sine of 45 is. Now remember, cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse and sine is the opposite over the adjacent. But check this out. The adjacent and the opposite, they're the same thing. Okay, so um, it doesn't really matter which one you use. So I'm going to use this one. Okay, so this is the opposite. This is the adjacent. So it's either adjacent over the hypotenuse x radical 2. Hmm. Okay. Let's do the sine of 45. Opposite over hypotenuse. X over x radical 2. Wait a minute. That's the same thing as this. Yeah, it is. Okay. For another reason that the cosine of 45 can be written as the sine of it if you do 90 minus 45. No coincidence, guys. It's like a little puzzle. So it's the same thing. Now all we got to do is figure out how does that going to simplify? Okay, so first off, you notice that you have x's right here. Okay? I'm going to only simplify one. I don't need to simplify both. Those x's divide out, and I get 1 over radical 2. Now hold on. We do not like radicals in the denominator. So what we're going to do is we are going to rationalize this. How do we do that? Multiply by the same denominator, radical 2 over radical 2, which is 1. You multiply the number by 1. So here's what you get. 1 times radical 2 is radical 2 over radical 2 times radical 2. That's 4. And the square root of 4, that's 2. So both of these are equal to radical 2 over 2. Kind of cool, huh? So these two angles have a special ratio okay so that's example number four all right example number five once again we are going to be using another special angle okay. in this case we're going to use the 30 60 90 from the previous problems that we did in the previous lesson same idea guys okay so that's 60 30 short leg is twice the hypotenuse, and the long leg is the length of short leg times radical 3. Where, where did I get all these, guys? Less than 9.2. Okay, special right triangles. So they want me to find out what is the sine of 30? What's the cosine of 30? So this is the angle. Okay. So the sine of 30 is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that's going to be opposite over the hypotenuse 2x. Okay, well, that's easy. The x's divide out. That gives me 1 over 2. Now, the cosine of 30 is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So this one, the adjacent for 30 is x radical 3. The hypotenuse is still the same. So what's going to happen? The x's are going to divide out. You still have a radical at the top, not at the bottom, so we're cool. So the sine of 30 is 1 half. The cosine of 30 is the square root of 3 over 2. Okay, those are special angles. I honestly suggest you start memorizing these because you're going to need to memorize them anyways when you guys get to trigonometry. And they're going to come in really handy once you guys are in calculus. Okay, so memorize them. You will need them. All right, this is example number six. Okay, so you are skiing on a mountain. Let me zoom in a little bit. With an altitude. 
of 1,200 feet. The angle of depression is 21 degrees. Now, the angle of depression is this one right here. <clears throat> okay, so that's 21 degrees. Find the distance x. You ski down the mountain to the nearest foot. So we're looking for this one. So now, what am I going to use? Am I going to use the sine ratio? Am I going to use the cosine ratio? Well, I don't know. Let's figure it out. What do I have? What do I know? I know the angle. Okay. Um, the side that is across from it is known. So that's my opposite, which means that I'm going to need the opposite, and I'm looking for the hypotenuse. So the only ratio that uses the opposite is the sine ratio. So we're not going to need the cosine ratio. So we're going to go ahead and set up our ratio. The sine of 21 is equal to the opposite. Okay, that's 1200 over the hypotenuse x. And now what you're going to do is you're going to treat it like a proportion. Now your variable is at the bottom of this case. Cross multiply. X times the sine of 21 equals 1200. And now our goal is to solve for x. So to solve for x, I need to divide by the sine of 21. Boom. Okay, so I'm going to put that into the calculator. Okay, watch how I'm going to type this in. Okay, let me move my own paper here. All right. Going to be 1200 divided by 21. Don't press equal. You're going to press the sign button first. That's the sign of 21. Then press enter, and that's what we're going to get. It says to the nearest one. So this is going to be approximately 3.49 because we are rounding to the nearest foot. That's what they wanted us to do. That's what we're going to do. Okay. All right. Now, make sure you guys are doing also the extra practices for the journal. Okay, those are the ones that you guys are going to be taking pictures of and sending them to me through either Remind or through email. I prefer email. But if you can do it through email, then do it through Remind. All right, make sure you guys also do the online homework and stay inside home, guys. Don't go anywhere. Peace.